Alrighty guys, what is up? Welcome back to Stoneblock 2 with Lone Debater 7, and today we're going to be taking a look at Lava Generation. So, in Modded Skyblock, Stoneblock, whatever you want to call it, um, Lava is something that you want to get pretty early on, primarily because that's how you build cobblestone generators, as well as how you make obsidian. So, what we're going to do is build what's called a crucible and that's actually the next quest for us anyway so the way you build a crucible is you get seven clay and seven bone meal to make seven porcelain clay then you take those seven and build it in a u shape to get an unfired crucible once we take that crucible pass it through our little furnace we get a regular one so what's interesting about this block is it will turn cobblestone into lava assuming there is a heat source underneath it so that heat source can be a torch it can be a um, lava block it can be netherrack with fire there's a bunch of different blocks that kind of count uh, however some are gonna generate heat better than others so to begin with we're just going to use a torch as you can see on the little uh, GUI or tooltip that comes up, there's no solids in there, there's no liquids in there, uh, but it is melting at a rate of one. So if we fill this up with four cobblestone, over time that four cobblestone will slowly turn into a block of lava. So that's how you make lava, at least to begin with, is you melt cobblestone inside of a crucible. Eventually we can build like a magma crucible or something which is going to be more efficient, but that's fine. So that is another quest complete. Let's go ahead and see what we get. Another spawner changer, so that's kind of lame. But as you can see, with the crucible, we now have a couple more options. So we could go the smeltery route, which we're going to do that later because it takes a little bit of time to get the resources. Uh, we can unlock a cobblestone gen, which we want to make as soon as possible. Basically, it's just six cobblestone, a glass, a water, and a lava bucket. So not too difficult. Or we could go fluid crafting, which is actually pretty easy, so we'll probably do this. So a stone barrel takes six smooth stone and then a stone slab. So what I did is I went ahead and made a stack of smooth stone. This furnace is like ridiculously amazing. A single sapling will do a whole stack of items and still have a little bit left over. So uh, it, like I'm so glad we got that item, uh, honestly. But we'll make our stone slabs like that. And then we'll get our stone barrel, just like so, and that gives us another quest. And this can be used for various recipes. If you put lava inside of this, and then tap that lava with a redstone, uh, you can get netherrack. Um, there's other stuff you can make as well, but we'll kind of cover that as it becomes more necessary. But bottom line, you get another reward. Six phantom faces. So I think these are used for wireless power, if I'm not mistaken. We don't have anything that can generate power yet, so we'll just save those for a rainy day. But that is fine. Not a bad uh, quest reward, honestly. So this unlocks netherrack. Um, so this will tell you, use redstone on a full uh, lava barrel. Um, and it will um, go ahead and uh, make you some netherrack. Uh, this reward is repeatable in case you lose it, as it's the only way to make hell biome. So, interesting, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I thought, that, as I understood it, to get to the nether, you just had to keep digging up, but that's fine. Um, what ifs? Let's see, so, I guess really what we should do, we could go towards the mining dimension, which basically just means we have to mine upwards in the world. It's about 250, 260, I want to say, is when you could potentially hit the mining dimension. It does vary a little bit, um, but basically you just dig upwards and eventually you'll go high enough into the world that you'll tick over into the mining dimension. Once in the mining dimension, you can actually mine all the ores, so like diamond, iron, gold, all that stuff you can get inside the mining dimension. So it, we'll probably do, or I'm going to build the channel off, or the staircase off uh, camera, just because it's pretty boring watching me just sit there and mine a bunch of uh, cobblestone, but that's fine. 
So I'm going to go ahead, chop those trees because they all grew. And we're going to do this. Oh, another thing. Um, so for food generation, a great way to kind of get some basic food is to build one of these apple saplings. Um, they are fairly straightforward. It takes three apples and any one sapling. So they give you those four starting apples. I would suggest keeping three of them to make into an apple sapling, and then you will be able to infinitely spawn apples. I'm not gonna plant this guy until we get hopping bonsai pots because it's not really worth it until then. But anyways, that's how I got this apple sapling. I didn't cheat it in. I actually crafted it with the starting apples they gave us. Um, which is something I suggest that you do as well. Um, outside of that, let's see, I'm going to keep 16 logs on me. I'm just kind of cleaning up my inventory a little bit. Um, another thing we did la uh, off camera, so I built this little hallway into this room. It's a 10 by 10, 3 high. And the reason why I dug this out, A, I wanted the cobblestone. And then B, this actually serves as a really good size footprint to do your ore excavate for your hammering. So you may find if you're playing along, um, it's not always easy to ore excavate a full stack of blocks. If you go through and build a little room like this that you don't put anything else in, you can just spam out blocks wherever, as long as they're all touching, you can ore excavate them. I'm probably gonna have my mining dimension staircase off of this room as well, just because it kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, so we did that in between sessions. Um, outside of that, I mean, really, we need to dig up to the mining dimension is kind of the next task for us. I need to wait for this lava, which actually should be getting pretty close. Yeah, got about a quarter block to go. Um, that way we can get a cobble gen set up. But we'll probably get the cobble generator next episode is kind of my guess. I want to sift some more gravel so I can upgrade these flint meshes to iron. And once I get them to iron, I'm probably just gonna make one and throw it in this heavy sieve. And then I can start using compressed uh, gravel and it will go a lot faster. So that's the benefit of the heavy sieve is you can do compressed blocks, which means for each block that you sieve, you're actually sieving a total of nine blocks. So it just makes things a lot faster. Uh, the other benefit of that is, or well, another thing that you can do is create what's called a compressed hammer. And what this will do is allow you to hammer compressed blocks. So what I mean by that, if you take nine cobblestone like that and just fill a crafting table, you'll get compressed cobblestone. If I try to hit this with my normal hammer, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna retrieve the block. Uh, but if I had a compressed hammer and hit it, it would turn that into a compressed gravel block. So that is a method to kind of go a little bit quicker. Um, you just mine a bunch of basic shits, cobblestone, compress it into compressed cobble, then use a compressed hammer to turn it into gravel, sand, or whatever you're trying to get a hold of um, at that point. So uh, not a bad little life hack. Another thing to mention, I did build another pattern it's called the sharpening kit. And the reason why I built this is twofold. First off, if I take this into our part builder and put cobblestone inside, I can build a stone sharpening kit. What this stone sharpening kit will allow me to do is repair my tools by combining it in a crafting bench. So if I do that, I could refill my hatchet's health without actually needing to come over to the tool station. For cobblestone, it actually is less efficient to make these when compared with just putting it into the table and using cobblestone, because each one of these takes two cobble, and it takes two of these to fully heal a broken tool, whereas it only takes two regular cobblestone to fully heal it inside the station. The benefit is you don't have to be at a tool station in order to fix your tool. So when we're building our mine shaft, we're gonna break through the durability of this. It has 128, but we're gonna mine way more than that to build our staircase. And as opposed to running down here every time our pickaxe breaks to repair it, I want those sharpening kits to heal it. The other thing that you can use those sharpening kits for is if you make an obsidian sharpening kit, so two obsidian, you can upgrade your tool to be able to mine cobalt. So we're gonna make an obsidian sharpening kit and show that off next time. 
uh, to upgrade our pickaxe so we can mine if any ore once we get to the mining dimension. But guys, if you enjoyed the episode today, be sure to like, comment, subscribe as always, and until next time, this has been LD7.